Hey guys, it's Merlini presenting you the Dota 2 6.87 patch analysis. If you've never watched any of my videos before, my patch analysis videos tend to be a little bit shorter than most and focusing more on what affects a competitive scene. If you want full details though, you can visit the full patch details at www.dota2.com 687 for all the juicy details, every single number on every single hero, and all the small changes that I did not mention in this 20 minute video. So first and foremost, a short and sweet, the summary of what I'm gonna be talking about today. Captain's mode and ranked AP got changed. Uh, there is a new scan ability added. It's like a new team-wide ability similar to Glyph. Uh, this icon on the top left of your mini map right here. Support quality of life has been increased as it has been for the past five or six patches. T2 and T3 tower pushing difficulty has changed. Roshan and some neutrals are more difficult slash less rewarding, focusing more on player on player interaction as Dota should be in my opinion. Seven new items and of course hero changes as comes with every major patch so focusing on the first bullet point we have captain's mode first pick no longer has last pick that is a huge implication for competitive dota and my speculation as to the reason why this change was implemented ice frog does not want the dire advantage to be offset by first pick or vice versa uh, the first pick advantage to be offset by dire and ideally and in a ideal world, Dota is balanced to the point that Radiant is approximately equal to Dire and first pick is approximately equal to second pick. Given the numbers from the last patch though, Dire was stronger than Radiant and first pick generally was stronger than second pick. At least that's what uh, teams preferred when it came to side or priority selection. But I think with these changes in this patch, Dire is a little bit weaker because Roshan is not as strong and uh, first pick is going to be less strong now because second pick has last pick. Having first pick and last pick, I don't even know why that lasted so long. And of course, ranked all pick now has a 15 second ban phase in the beginning to make it, I would assume, a little bit more fun and hopefully balanced. So. Let's talk about this new scan ability. It is a new team ability available on the minimap UI, the top left, as I showed you before. It scans a targeted 900 AUE for eight seconds and will show up on your minimap. It has a binary display, meaning it can only show red or green. It shows red if enemy heroes are present in the area or not present in the area. It shows green if enemy heroes are there. If they're invisible, it will show green. If they are smoked, it will show green. If they are inside the Roshan pit, it will show red and does not consider smoke units, does not consider units inside the Roshan pit to reiterate. And the cooldown is four and a half minutes, does not, uh, is not cooled down at the start of the game, meaning you can only use it four and a half minutes in. And there's currently no hotkey for this, but I assume that there will be very, very soon. It doesn't really make sense for it not to, but this is a very, very powerful ability. You, you can use it defensively or offensively. I would say more so used offensively than defensively from the few games that I play, but this is going to change Dota a lot, at least at the high level. Support quality of life increase. Uh, everyone's HP has been increased, so 20 base, and you get plus one per strength. So just straight, flat out increase for everyone without items or with items. And everyone's mana has been increased for the most part. You get plus 50 base intel, but minus one per int. So after you get 50 intel, you will have less mana. Uh, but this is almost strictly a buff uh, for every hero especially when you consider the next change. 16 int now gives plus 1% spell damage. That is something that's very unique, uh, but it actually makes a decent amount of sense. HP is, uh, you know, strong on everybody, so everyone kind of desires strength. Uh, agility gives you damage, attack speed, and armor. Uh, and int only gives mana, mana regen, and damage, I guess, for int heroes, but the mana regen is kind of negligible. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good buff. TP scroll now costs 50 gold, down from 75. Uh, you know, supports mostly are the ones having trouble 
buying TP scrolls, so this will be nice for them. And uh, back to the last point, most supports are intelligence heroes, so this will affect intelligence heroes more so than other ones. Flying Courier now 150 gold down from 200. Uh, Tome of Knowledge has now been added. 10 minutes in, you can buy a Tome of XP to catch up. Uh, it's definitely more useful for uh, less XP heroes, like your supports based on like comeback mechanics and uh, just based on it, it's like a raw XP as opposed to a percentage base. It's not like half a level. It's just flat 425 experience. Ranged creeps gives more XP. Melee creep less. Why is this a support QL increase? I guess it's mostly for Lich and Enigma, who are almost exclusively run as support, sometimes offlane, I suppose. Uh, but this really buffs up their early game. I'm not exactly sure why this change uh, was implemented, but. Uh, we'll have to live with it, and we will see how it affects Dota in the next few days slash weeks. And there are some other minor buffs and nerfs, like, you know, Glimmer Cape, Mana Cost Reduced. Uh, but overall, there are, are a lot more buffs than nerfs. So the gap in between supports and cores is gradually decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. TD2 and T3 pushing difficulty change. Towers now grant an armor aura to allied heroes. One armor for T1s and three armor for t tier two, tier three, and t four. So the reason I didn't really list T1 is because it hasn't changed that much. One armor to allied heroes is not very significant. Uh, tower true sight range has reduced from 900 to 700, same as his attack range. This will make uh, pushing easier. Uh, you can drop wards far more aggressively and NVC heroes have more free roam. Tier three tower slash racks moves very slightly back away from the ramp so that changes the high ground uh, defense and push blightstone has been added which makes pushing easier blightstone is a very cheap item that reduces armor by two it's an orb effect but it does affect towers which is kind of interesting so it makes Aquila less valuable because generally you wanted that for pushing because it's one of the few items that helped you push sub 1000 gold i guess medallion uh, Aquila, and now blightstone and there are some terrain changes near towers. If you want the specifics, uh, you know, images of the terrain changes, I'm not going to go through each of them individually, but you can visit this thread, which I will post in the details uh, below the YouTube video. And Roshan slash new changes. So earlier I mentioned that Dyer was going to be a little bit weaker, and mostly that's because Roshan has been changed. Roshan magic resistance from 75% to 55%. It seems like only a 20% difference, but now he almost takes double the damage that he did before from magic. Uh, so this makes uh, other alternatives other than Ursa and Drow Ranger. Uh, you know, you can have other Roshan strats aside from that, or, uh, you know, making medallion and solar less mandatory for doing roche as it you know it's kind of already not that mandatory roshan hp has been strictly increased for uh, his base hp has been increased by 500 and the scaling per minute has also been increased by 50 roshan experience bounty now scales and there's a net drastic decrease uh, early in the game i think it used to give like 1700 plus in the early game now it only gives like 700 or 800 that is a huge decrease a so level one roche not that big of a deal ursa getting roche seven six minutes in not as big of a deal as before roche had armor type from basic to hero uh, it is a strict buff from all damage types uh, you'll have to look up specifics, but just consider it a buff for Roshan and things like Serpent Wars should do a lot less damage to Rosh. Uh, Dark Troll Summoner, less damage, but hero damage now. Hero damage does a lot more damage to heroes than piercing damage, so he is much stronger than before. And there are too many Centaurs and Centaur Large Camps, making it much more difficult to stack large camps and take it out with uh, pure magic damage or straight magic damage, pure magic damage. Bad choice of words there. And there are seven new items. Bloodthorn, the first one, which I like to call Super Orchid. It also gives crit and true strike while affected by the uh, the Orchid. It is 7195 gold, and it is pretty sick item. It is super expensive, though. 7200 gold is just absurdly high, but you know it makes Orchid a lot better because now you don't have to sell it for a scythe or whatever it may be you want to turn your Orchid into. Echo Saber. Melee double attack, built from Oblivion Staff plus Ogre Club for 2650 gold. No recipe cost. This item is amazing for the most part. I've seen it gotten a lot on Slarks. I got it myself on Tiny today. It is really good. Uh, you can kind of consider it like a 200% uh, crit every five seconds. 
Um, it's way better for heroes that attack slowly, like strength heroes, like Slardar, Tiny, CK, those sort of heroes, uh, because it gives you a lot of attack speed pseudo for uh, that one attack cooldown is every five seconds so it actually increases your damage by a ton especially considering the way fights work like you get kited a lot so you don't get to hit that often hurricane pike is like a super four staff 43 75 gold dragon lance four staff plus recipe what happens is if you cast it on ally it's just a normal four staff if you cast it on an enemy it has a very short cast range, I believe 400. Both of you get pushed away from each other and you no longer have range limitations when you attack that opposing hero. However, this is limited to ranged heroes, or that effect rather, uh, the no range uh, limitation. And it only lasts for four seconds, but it does seem pretty darn good and makes melee life a little bit harder. Blightstone, it is a new orb used in Medallion slash Dezo, 300 gold, infused raindrops. It is an alternative to Aquila slash Stick slash Bracer. Uh, so, like, if you're looking for cheap items to get you through to the mid game, it'd almost always be one of these three, especially if you are a core. But now you can get an infused raindrops. It provides flat mana regen, 0.85, I believe, which is really good, and it... Uh, like, blocks magic damage. Uh, so, in that sense, it's, like, kind of good for skirmishes like stick and the term that it gives you just like a little hp boost every now and then but instead of boosting your hp it blocks magic damage uh so you should be looking to pick that up uh, a decent amount i think but it's only in stock i think three minutes into the game 225 gold cost wind lace plus 20 move speed kind of like mini boots 225 gold now uh required for drums of endurance as well as yules and Tome of Knowledge, 425 XP, 150 gold. And to give you some sort of sense about how much 425 XP is, it is around half of level 8. This is only in stock 10 minutes in. It is a great catch-up item for broke or supports who don't have any levels. And overall patch themes. Uh, you probably already read your patch notes yourself, especially since I'm releasing this video much later than the patch actual release. So what information can we gather? What direction is Ice Frog headed towards? What kind of game does he envision Dota to be? And what can you expect from future patches? So firstly, equalization of items and heroes. This has almost always been a thing, but uh, even more so lately than uh, before, I would say. Balance of power is the image i chose for this one and there is more dynamic gameplay so less idle pilot you actually have to think a lot more and the game situation changes even faster pace than before so equalization of items and heroes uh big losers invoker od specter zeus invoker actually has a cast point on the spells now od might have mana issues now and then specter haunt uh cooldown has been increased uh zeus got nerfed with like static got nerfed as well as um, static not uh, stopping blink dagger, which I think is a really big deal. But he did get a small buff in the sense that intelligence does uh, give more magic damage now. But then again, ether got nerfed. So overall, the, these three in heroes have been pretty big nerf, but maybe not as large a nerf because of the hint hero spell damage thing. And Spectre got nerfed because he was kind of overpicked and overplayed as a carry and probably too strong. Big winner's Axe. His spin now does pure damage. So he scales much better than before. Uh, and also Blade Mail got buffed. And Axe is one of the best Blade Mail carriages in the game. Earthshaker, he has this sick Axe upgrade where when you cast enchant totem you can cast in the area and you just like leap over it looks like you got tossed into that area it looks ridiculous you'll laugh the first few times you see it and it is really strong because he doesn't need four staff um anymore and it, i don't know it's just sick Riki actually got added to cm now so he's playable and i think blink strike got buffed tricks of the trade got buffed so overall his cast point on tricks of the trade that's actually a really big deal too he is decent now as a core Big losers for items, Basilius, Aquila, Vlad, all these lose minus one armor. So same cost as before, not as attractive with a minus one armor. Uh, on top of that, there's a lot more alternatives if you want to push, which is, uh, you know, Blightstone, so on and so forth. Uh, Veil got nerfed. I think it has minus six int. It has a recipe now, recipe cost now instead of uh, no recipe like before. And... We have range S and Y got nerfed. I think the slow is reduced a pretty significant amount. So it looks like he wants to keep 
at the you know same kind of restricted to melee heroes or at least its effectiveness uh, restricted to melee heroes similar to you know abyssal or like you know dragonlance for ranged so mm, not too big a deal it just means that ranged heroes aren't going to go sny every single game uh, like they did before and big winners blade mail now returns uh damage returns damage as the damage type it was received as which is a big nerf to bkb so if you're a right click hero you attack someone who's blade mail and you pop your bkb you will get returned as uh physical damage uh pretty big deal i would say because it did not use the pierce bkb before it was pure damage but not spell piercing uh but it does get mitigated by whatever armor uh, you have if it's physical damage, or if you have huge amounts of magic resist, you get it gets reduced by magic resistance. Uh, Dragon Lance, uh, different recipe now or different build up. It's uh, Ogre Club plus two bands of Elven Skin, so you get a lot more agility, which is you know inherently two armor plus uh, you know fifteen attack speed. So that's pretty cool. And on top of that, you can turn it into Hurricane Pike. So no longer will you have this item that you just need to disassemble later for like orchid or butterfly you can actually change it into uh, something that's probably more useful for the dragon lens carrier lotus orb just got straight buffed the 900 recipe got removed and got replaced by a arcane uh, sorry energy booster which is easily built up from uh, arcane boots so this item you can get a lot earlier now and it's just not as awkward and you can kind of build it more on the fly too just because like oh i have arcane boots i really need a lotus orb i just need to invest you know 30 to 50 gold ish instead of having to invest 4150 like before and it, it, you know it's just straight better you get mana uh, silver edge now takes a ultimate orb instead of a sange I think overall it's a pretty big buff because it no longer takes recipes, so it's a little bit cheaper than before, and it gives way better like well-rounded stats. Uh, I think like most of the heroes that need it, yeah, they could use some strength too, but it's nice to have some agility and some int mixed into there, and you can disassemble it too if you want to build, you know, Scotty Lincolns, whatever it may be afterwards. So Silver Edge I think is much much better than before, and. Uh, moving on towards the second part of equalization of items and heroes, initial bounty rune no longer gives XP. So you, there's going to be just less disparity in between like the top strongest hero in the game and the weakest hero in the game. Um, you know, it starts with this, and then there's a tome of knowledge that will make the weakest hero a little bit stronger. Uh, melee attack range increased from 128 to 150, so there's slightly less. Uh, difference in between melee and ranged heroes base hp and mana increase which means that items are worth a little bit less because everyone has base stats imagine if uh everyone had like 10,000 hp and 10,000 mana items would mean very very little in the game uh and imagine on the flip side where everyone has one hp and one mana items would mean everything so you know it's somewhere in the middle it's leaning more towards the 10,000 and 10,000 where uh, items are just not nearly as important as before, but still important. So less emphasis on farming and strong heroes and weak heroes, not as big of a difference as before. Late game potency of non-right-click heroes increase. So this increases hero viability in the late game. This is mostly due to the int change, uh, 16 int giving plus 1% 1%, uh, 1 spell damage. So, you know, you don't have to have like multiple scaling cores before or there'll be different scaling cores like Zeus, for example, might be a lot stronger because of the end change. And there are cheaper support items such as a TP scroll. Uh, smoke was uh, cheapened, I think, last patch. It's, I think, reduced uh, cool restock time this patch. Uh, Observer Wars are like slightly cheaper. Flying Courier is cheaper. So, you know, supports can spend less uh, time supporting their cores and buying items for themselves. And the second part of my patch themes was more dynamic gameplay. I found this kind of hard to fit and word into something succinct, but overall the game is going to be just a lot, uh, change a lot more. And it's going to be a lot more fluid, a lot more faster. Things will happen faster. People will take uh, objectives faster. People will move, move around the map faster, react faster, and you'll gain a little bit more information. And why is this going to happen? Firstly, observer wards duration, restock interval, and cost has reduced. You're not as committed to placing obs wards because they last six minutes instead of seven. So if you just want to drop it to take a tower and you, you guys take the tower within the next 30 seconds, you won't be punished as much for that. You can move on to the next objective one minute earlier because you can set up vision earlier hot spots will change more often because 
you don't have to play around your wards as much. And dewarding is not as rewarding for the team that dewards and is uh, not as bad for the team that is going to ward. You don't have to wait uh, to get rid of your uh, black map as much and the team that was in power is only going to have it for six minutes instead of seven. So everything's just going to be shifted a, a lot faster. Uh, some people say that might like decrease the skill cap because, you know, dewarding is not as rewarding. But overall, I think it's a huge... Uh, huge benefit like mistakes aren't punished as much but it just means there are a lot more options which i always think is good in a game like dota scry makes gameplay more dynamic and less based around smokes in the mid to late game in the middle late game especially at competitive play it was heavily based around smokes and if you didn't have smokes or if they had observer wards up it would just be much more difficult to make a move in uh, on the map you don't know if like supports are sitting behind cores you don't know if they're moving to rose you don't know if they're smoked up that hill but now with scry you can play around that much easier and if you just you're just missing that one piece of information to make a gank you can have it now with scry every four and a half minutes too so it's not even close to as long as smoke uh, one thing about the scry though is some people might advocate that it might actually make people less defensive let's say you're a core you're farming on the side you're worried about the ganking you you just scan from their gank position and then you can go back to farm a little bit more i think scry will be used like that occasionally but overall i think it's uh it promotes aggression uh because you you'll you can be more certain and take less risks because you have more information available to you and less recipes makes item progression less rigid power spikes less abrupt and hence farming less important um like the difference in between like, I don't know, Maelstrom, let's say, or Desolator. Like, Desolator is not that strong. Two Hammers is pretty weak overall, but that last recipe makes you a lot, lot stronger. So, like, your first Hammer makes you go up like this, your second Hammer makes you go up like this, and your recipe makes you go up like this. But now, with the Blightstone, your um, Power Spike is, is much... It's not as abrupt. It's just, like, you're going up more, and then your Blightstone makes it, like, you know tick up a little bit but not as much as it did before so now you don't have to farm it's like oh wait for my recipe wait for um you know i need a, I need to farm this or else i'm useless a, a great example of that is blink dagger like a bat rider farming the off lane he's not that useful without blink dagger because you have just a ton of gold just sitting there like two thousand gold and your power spike once you get your blink dagger is huge so like now the buildups for other items like drums and yules and stuff like that the recipe cost is going to be less and you'll actually have your gold invested into something as you're building it up so that uh, farming is actually less important or so i believe because recipes are kind of like a dead gold i guess and you can actually buy the recipe or what used to be the recipe first so that you can be a little bit stronger as you're building up to that item for example you can buy the wind lace very very early on so you can have the move speed so you can outmaneuver people instead of having to get that move speed aspect from the drums in that very expensive recipe um, so that is pretty cool and i i'm always a fan of less rigidity and you know things that are less standard so people have more options you can uh, make better decisions to win and outplay your opponents so overall that was my patch analysis. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to follow me um, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, slash Dota, and of course I stream on Twitch, slash Dota. Thank you guys for watching. Have fun with the patch.